Welcome to Intersections. We have a first here today. We have the Osmond family with us. We have Bert, Karen, Claire, and Jane, and we are going to spend a little bit of time getting to know them better and to see how faith intersects with their living every day. So welcome to Intersections. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Uh, so let's start with Bert and Karen uh, and get you thinking about uh, where you were raised as a child and whether or not church was a part of your childhood experience and if so, uh, what kind of activities were you involved in in a church setting? So let's start with Bert. I was born and raised in St. John's. Um, Started coming to the Citadel as a very young boy. Played in junior band and Cubs at the uh, old, the old Citadel. And most I came a lot with my grandparents. Okay. Yep. Fine. Uh, and um, so those were the activities for you. That's wonderful stuff. That's where it starts. So Karen. Um, your faith tradition is not local to St. John's Citadel. You were born uh, somewhere else in this province, and your faith tradition was in the Roman Catholic Church, I believe. Would you share a little bit about that with us? Sure. I was actually born in St. John's. Oh, were you? Yes, and uh, grew up in town in St. John's for several years. Um, I was christened Roman Catholic, and... Uh, Church was very, very important to us. Um, we attended uh, Pius Tenth here in St. John's, and um, you know it was kind of a given that you went to church on Sundays and you took part in any activities within. Um, it wasn't ever said that you have to go. Uh, my mom and dad never ever said you have to get up and go to church on Sunday, Karen. I said, but it was just accepted. It was a part of who we were. And um, lots of good memories. Um, I do remember my first communion, mm -hmm. and uh, I've actually shared my tiny little dress mm -hmm. with uh, the girls. Um, and, uh, you know, it was always a part of who we were. Uh, later on in life, we moved to Beta Vert, uh, where my dad was teaching, and he became very involved in the choir. And so did myself and my sister. Dad was the organist in the church, and uh, you know, like I think back to Easter, uh, we pretty well spent the whole week <laughs> in church uh, for Easter. And as I said, it was just a very important part of who we were. Uh, then uh, I met up with my husband, Bert, and uh, church was definitely something that we both felt was important to us. Um, Bert did not have that same um, connection right up through, um, you know, as, as, as he got older, past his teenage years, but still had that connection. Um, even though he didn't attend, he knew that it was a part of who we would be as a family. And I was quite okay. Um, my only goal was that when we had children, we'd certainly wanted uh, religion or of some sort to be a part of their lives. And I have to say, my own parents were quite, quite fine with uh, the decision that we made. And to this day, um, mom often speaks of the, um, you know, how, how glad she is to see our girls involved in activities here. And God love dad, uh, he's not with us now, but he did attend many services here. Uh, and every time we went home, he would comment and say, Karen, what an honor to see those girls shine in their, you know, in their bit, in the music. And he also often commented on the facility uh, here at the Citadel, you know, and was just amazed at what the core had to offer. So Good. I have to say it was one of the best decisions I've made so far in my Good. life. Thanks. So it's great. I'm going to come yeah. back to you on some of those things in a bit. Let's just switch the attention to the, uh, to the center stage and, uh, and ask uh, these two young ladies to consider, um, well, 
we've always known you here at St. John's Tidler. We've watched you grow, and there's an element of pride in watching you mature. Uh, and, but so this has always been a part of your life. Can you just talk a little bit about some of your early involvement here at the Citadel, activities that you were involved in, things that you did? Uh, and uh, let, is it okay to start with you, Jane? Yeah, for All sure. Right. Um, so I've been coming to the Citadel since I was young, like since I can remember. And I remember coming out every Sunday morning to the services and seeing all my friends at Junior Soldiers. And it was so nice to be able to come and all be together and be learning about new Bible verses and making crafts and just the whole like way of everyone together. And then every Thursday night we would come out and we would have band practice and we would have um, sing company. And it was always a great time then. We'd be able to share together in music and help each other learn about music, and it was so nice. <laughs> Good, thank you so much for that. And Claire, you? Well, mine is pretty similar um, to Jane. Um, I learned brass, uh, how to play brass instrument here at the Citadel. Um, I started in singing company when I was in kindergarten, so I was about five. Um, I also started singing solos here at the church from a very young age, so a lot of it has been um, very musical. Um, but aside from that, I attended Sunday school, um, and then I went up through, I did junior soldiers, so it's kind of been a diverse experience, but I'm really grateful for everything. Good. So thank you. You've partaken, the two of you, in just about everything we can <laughs> offer you here, and that's wonderful. Um, let's just keep going on uh, and expand them so that people that listen and watch know a little bit more about you. Uh, Karen, what kind of interests do you have, hobbies or things of that nature? I know you're a teacher, and I know that that's a job and a half, so, um, <laughs> yeah. but, but at the same time, you must have other things that you are interested in. When I do get some free time, mm -hmm. I do enjoy uh, being around people. I love to socialize. Friends are very important to me. My family, uh, my mom, you know, she's kind of number one outside of my own family and spend a fair bit of time with her. I do like to go outside. I find that walking is always something that I enjoy. We do have a new addition to our family. We have a new puppy dog, Ozzy. And uh, it's so nice to be able to go out and kind of just, uh, you know, refresh yourself and to um, think about things that you have uh, on your mind and, uh, you know, enjoy the fresh air. So I think that would be my favorite thing to enjoy. And Bert, aside from selling houses, what, what <laughs> aside from like selling that? houses and keeping the girls, trying to keep the girls busy and where they got to go, um, I, I I always enjoyed swimming, but I haven't done much lately. But I grew up and I was a, a I did a lot. I was heavily involved in volunteering uh, with the uh, Royal Life Saving Society at the time. And other than that, I just enjoy the outdoors, try to hike when we can with the girls if we got time, and now we try to take puppy with us, and just to get outside, get away from it all, and a bit of peacefulness, a bit of nature. Is, is Renews good. the spirit. It's good for you. Good. Absolutely. Excellent. Now, Claire and Jane, you've already referenced that music has played and is playing a significant role, uh, so, and, and, but, so I'd like to get into your broader interests. That is one of them. Uh, can you tell me how that gets expressed for you, uh, either here in the church currently or in the community, and then any other interests beside music that you have? Sure. So. Um, well, I currently lead the youth worship team here at the Citadel. Um, so we lead worship here about once a month. Um, so that's a great experience just to learn more about leading and how to lead a team. Um, I'm also in the senior band here. I play E-flat horn. Um, outside of the church, um, I also lead worship at Mosaic Campus Church, um, which is a multi-denominational church at uh, Memorial University. Um, so that's a cool, diverse experience. Um, I'm also still a part of the Shalloway Youth Choir um, in their Exultate group. Um, me and Jane are in that group. So it's a group of students ranging from about grade 10 up into university. And we're actually preparing now to go to a World Choral Expo in Portugal. So that's kind of something we're looking forward to. Um, outside of that, I don't really have much time on my hands. Um, 
between studying and I have working a few jobs and research and working in healthcare and stuff, so it's very busy. Um, but when I do have a few minutes, um, I do enjoy reading and um, going out to the mall just to have a look around. And I love coffee, so anytime I can go through a Starbucks drive-through, even if it's only for a few minutes, it's a nice little break. Great, thanks so much. Yeah, not much time in there. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Jane, what about you? Well, I'm mostly the same way as Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of music activities. Um, I'm involved in the band at my school and also the choir. So that's three days a week. And then I have, I'm in three groups with Shalloway. I help out with the little kids. And I'm in Camerata. And I'm also in the Exultate group. And I also help out and play euphonium in the Citadel's youth band. And about a couple times a month, I go to Newfound Brass, which is the divisional youth band of the Salvation Army. So is there a revolving door in your house? <laughs> there is. There's two. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> don't try to go. Don't try to come out the window, right? And you even forgot your piano with oh, yes. Miss Tracy. Yes. <laughs> That's great. That's sure. great. Uh, well, you know, there's not much room for having idle minds and hands with these two. That's great. Um, let's uh, ask Bert and Karen and, and talk a little bit about about the fact that this program is called Intersections and it has to do with how life intersects with faith and ask you if you can uh, pinpoint for me some place in your life. I mean, uh, there's been a little bit of a segue already in the fact that when you two got together and decided to marry and have a family that you had certain parameters based around that in terms of uh, religious activity and, and faith and church and all that. Can you, can you each, uh, are you able to pinpoint a time, a place, a person, an event, whatever, where you made the decision for yourself that at, you knew that going forward, uh, faith was something that had to be a real part of your existence? Okay. Um, I think, as I um, earlier said, um, it was always a part of who I was. Like there was, an, I can't really pinpoint a particular time. Um, there were certain parts of your life where, um, you know, certain events were important to you. And as I said, um, being born into a Roman Catholic family, uh, in the beginning, that was, I guess, my my, you know, where uh, my direction. And I mentioned my mom and dad, but. Even my grandparents, uh, the same way, especially my dad's parents, they were very uh, heavily involved in the church. And, uh, you know, it was, just, it was just a part of who you were, the same way it was, you know, getting up and getting dressed uh, in the morning. It was, it was a part of your life to be involved in the church. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said earlier, too, <laughs> Um, the second part of my life, uh, when um, you know I did meet Bert, uh, that was kind of a rejuvenation, I think, of the, my faith, and um, it just kind of gave a new light to um, what God had to offer us. And uh, I'm really glad that we kind of followed that because it was kind of, you know, we married in the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we did have. Um, Officer. Yes, um, with us, and uh, you know it worked out fine. But I'm I'm gl really glad that this was the path that we took, and it's it's just made us who we are, mm -hmm. um, you know. And not only the ch the children are involved here at the Citadel, but myself and Bert have also been involved in some things here as well. Yeah, you for many years I've recalled. Vac vacation Bible school definitely had a lot to do with that yeah Teaching. I was actually here with Jane when Jane was born June 27th <laughs> and that July 6th I was here so you know God love her she she was a good baby she did well in the stroller so that was yeah that was very exciting to be a part of that group uh, myself and Bert also did KFC um, with the, the younger children. So, um, just for those watching who may not know the acronym, yeah. KFC, Kids, Kids for, for Christ. For Christ, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Burke can probably allude to some of that as okay, well. Great. Yeah. Okay, Burke, back to you. When did, when did you really sort of... I think uh, probably when we, when we started our family. Yeah. 
I had a found my foundation. So. That's okay. That's quite okay. We can cut if you like. My foundation was And we just wanted to make sure the children yes. had that foundation. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I can empathize with what you're going through at this moment. It happened to me on Good Friday, I think. Uh, I was, I was uh, singing and all of a sudden I was overcome with, with that emotion. And that's a, that's a spiritual moment, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when, yeah, so very good. Well, yes. I had been away for a long time. Yeah. And came back. Good. As you we did. Yeah, good. Uh, somebody in an earlier interview today uh, talked about uh, God's pursuit of us and his way of not letting us go uh, and bringing us back. And I think that's what you're articulating here. So that's very, very important. Um, and thank you for that authenticity. That's, that's really quite something. Claire and Jane. So when, you know, you were at that stage of life, when you got dressed in the morning, well, somebody else dressed you, and brought you here and held your hand and came in and said, this is the Sunday school room and this is where you go and this is what you do and now you're going to be involved in this activity and that activity and you've, you've told us what those activities are. And that was then. And this is now. Uh, now, uh, you know, that childlike faith that you learn, we all learn as a toddler, uh, if we are around the influences of faith that have been described here, uh, you've had the benefit of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there comes this other point in your life when, you know, uh, life takes on a bit more of independence and um, you go to, through the school system, uh, <coughs> Jane, you're now in high school, uh, and uh, Claire, you are now in uh, university. You're interacting or intersecting with all manner of uh, folks, uh, different value systems, belief systems, all the rest of it. There comes a place, I guess, where you're sorting it all out in your mind, and you say, uh, yeah, well, that's good, or that's good, or that's good, so where's faith play a role in all of that for you at this juncture of your lives? Sure, I'll start. Um, <laughs> I, well, I'm at university now and a lot of my education was actually online um, because of COVID. So I'm really only interacting with um, my fellow students and professors and stuff this year. So it's kind of, I've really noticed it um, this year. But I guess um, a lot of people, I kind of just bring my faith across as just being kind and respectful, um, being there when someone's having a tough day, they know they can come to me, um, and just like trying to stay positive and have a smile on my face, just, I guess that's just kind of my way to say that like you're not alone in this, like there's someone there for you. Um, and then also, I'm actually the um, Mosaic Cares Coordinator with um, the Mosaic Campus Church now. Um, so in that role, I kind of connect the faith community to um, the campus. So it's kind of a brand new role for me. I've only just started in the past month, but through being on that committee, um, a few things we've done, we've uh, gave people Starbucks gift cards for exam studying and just kind of wrote a few little Bible verses and quotes on them. So it's just kind of small ways for us to kind of bring our faith to the campus. So I feel like that's super important for me and it's really great um, to have on campus. Good for you. Okay, Jane, take it away. <laughs> um, so I find like my values are also very important for, with faith. And at school, I'm on the student council. So that I think that's my opportunity to make sure that everyone's um, opinions and values are getting no, are being known and in that group we make sure that when we are making decisions for our school we are think like keeping everyone in mind and making sure that we're spreading kindness around our school and respecting each other 
And we also keep in mind our community and we have done many food drives and for our local food banks and we have also done some care packages for seniors around our community. Great, great stuff. All stepping stones, all of them, <laughs> for whatever's to come down the road. Um, let's go back to mom and dad and to say, ask you a little bit about your workplace. You both, in your workplace, deal with people. Uh, in little different scenarios, but you deal with people. And people come in all shapes and sizes, and they bring all kinds of stuff with them. Uh, baggage, we call it sometimes, and uh, you see them at their best, and you see them at their worst. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we already know that you have a basis of faith. You've shared that with us. How does that pl play out for you in those kinds of circumstances in the workplace? I think for me is, is mostly uh, just honesty and integrity. And I, I don't know, it's, it's just, you know, I, I try to be as honest as I can, whatever, if I'm looking at a house, if somebody asks me for an opinion, and, and that's important. Yep, absolutely it is, yeah. Karen? Um, I think much the same. Uh, kindness is what comes to my mind and acceptance. Um, as Derek said that, you know, as a teacher, you're dealing with um, many types of children within your class. Uh, some are like, you know, with regards to intelligence, are extremely intelligent. Uh, some have many needs, are challenged. Um, but you have to look at each of those individually and um, also their families as well. Uh, they don't all come uh, with the same background as uh, you or I have, um, but I do find that being kind to them, accepting them, uh, patience is very important. Um, I actually use the word faith in my class many times. And, you know, even little things like when we're lining up to go to gym, I'll say, I have faith in you guys that you are going to be able to do this uh, today. And one little guy actually asked me uh, one day, Miss, what do you mean by faith? And caught me off guard, you know, and I said, well, I said, it's kind of uh, like trust, I said, and an understanding, I said, of who you are. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. Um, every day you go in, you want to try to be as fresh as you are for, you know, for the morning session as you are in the afternoon. But, um, you know, you, you take as much time as you can to listen to them. Uh, we actually have children now who are not wanting Fridays to come or the, the Christmas break or the summer break. They love school. So I think that says a lot about who we are, um, you know, within our communities. So, you know, I do enjoy it. Um, as Derek said, it is my year of retirement, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's pluses and, you know, there's, there's good and bad to that. So, uh, yeah, so it's all well, good. Well, thanks for that segue. Uh, and so now uh, <laughs> it is coming. June is coming. Yes. Um, and uh, retirement is looming. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, yes, there, there are some things to miss. And um, I will put this forward that the, what you'll miss most will be the people. Definitely. Uh, and what you'll miss least are the demands. Mm -hmm. uh, so what does retirement look like for you? Do you have anything planned? Do you, are you just going to take it easy? What's the story? Well, that's kind of a joke in the last month or so within the household. Uh, these three <laughs> seem to have it all planned for me. <laughs> but uh, to be honest, um, I am very much looking forward to it. I have actually uh, stayed on teaching for three extra years. And my dad often said that you will know when the day is right. And I have to be honest, this is it. And I feel so comfortable about the retirement time. Um, my plan, to be honest, is to, uh, I'm not going to commit, to be honest, to very much. I'm going to enjoy the first little bit for myself and for these three because they have put up with me um, a lot in the sense of my, my teaching. Teaching has been very, very important to me. And even after 33 years, I'm still taking out my books every night. 
And uh, so that's going to be an adjustment, uh, not having that um, responsibility. But I am definitely looking forward to being able to be, um, you know, helping Bert out, to be honest, with uh, doing a lot of the things around the house and with the girls, uh, getting them to their different activities and things like that. Yeah. And you will always be a teacher. I will. You yeah. will always be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And so let's go down the line here and say, Jane, looking into the future, any plans? What are the plans for you? What, what, I mean, I know they can change, but what are you thinking now the future might hold for you? Well, since I've been young, I have been think thinking teaching. And some days I think still that might happen, but other days I think not. But I have a love for helping little kids and some people my age, just being there for others and always know, like letting people know that I'm there for them and just wanting to help people. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. I think that that's a generational thing, isn't it? Because your family, your father was a teacher, right? So, uh, you, you know, you never know. You never know. <laughs> You'll make your own mark, I'm sure. And what about you, Claire? Um, well, it kind of started out like Jane. I was kind of following in mom's footsteps. Um, I remember when I was younger playing teacher in her classroom and stuff. <laughs> um, once I got to high school, um, I was exposed to more science courses. Um, pretty much the first day I took a biology course, I fell in love with it. Um, so I, that's kind of when my mind went to science. Um, right now, I'm thinking medicine or something in the medical field. Um, so I haven't completely strayed away from the ideas of teaching. I mean, in medicine, you're still caring for others. There's still the aspect of teamwork and stuff, but we'll see. I'm in my, I'm going into my fourth year now, so there's a lot of decisions coming up and applications, but <laughs> who knows where I'll be this time next year. <laughs> Fair enough. And Bert, you're still uh, going to be out there? I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. Wonderful. I was in a job that I was very unhappy in. And I took a year off and started real estate to grow my license. Yep. And I'm really enjoying this, I gotta say. Well, what they so say. So who knows? You know what they say. It's in his hands. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's a good point. Uh, but they say, you know, that if you, if you find something you really love to do, it's not working, right? So, Absolutely. <clears throat> so that's, take it, that's where you are. That's exactly and where I am. To all of you, I think you just hit the nail on the head, regardless mm -hmm. of what, retirement, future plans, changing plans, <laughs> stay at work. Uh, because of faith, we know that uh, mm -hmm. there is somebody who holds our future and Definitely. we trust in him. Mm -hmm. Let me say thank you for being with us today on Intersections and sharing a little bit about who you are so that people can get to know you a little bit better. Uh, and uh, I have observed sitting here uh, as you have been responding, uh, an immense amount of pride on the ends uh, <laughs> as, uh, as you two have articulated your various viewpoints and responses. And I know that there's a lot of pride in, within your parents for you. And can I say uh, that the Citadel family, the larger Citadel family, really values you and uh, really um, we, have, we, we watch with pride also as you both grow and mature. And we appreciate you both, Bert and Karen. Thank you for being here. Thank it's you. a pleasure. Thank you.